Hi everyone, it's Stu here from 3B and today I want to talk to you a little bit about Hi-Fi. Is it just a load of old snake oil? Are we just simply buying into the old hype that isn't really there? Are we just sort of trying to justify the price of these things because we've spent so much on it rather than actually being quite critical and saying, yeah, I can't really tell much difference. Let's sort it out. So, um, Hi-Fi, I've got a lot of experience with audio um, and, and God knows what over the years. Audio and Hi-Fi, I, I trained in music uh, for my um, degree. I've got a master's uh, in uh, sound production and all that kind of guff. So I kind of have a feel for these sorts of things and I kind of have a need and a desire for wanting the best in terms of audio because I tend to be very critical as to what I'm listening to. Much to the point of what I'm watching, but also to more to what I'm listening to in terms of music. To that end, I have over a good amount of time, um, 20, 30 years, uh, invested an awful lot of money on hi-fi. I've had brands from uh, Nime, Cyrus, um, Cord, uh, Quad, uh, B&W, uh, Lin, which we've got behind us, um, as well as uh, Cyrus, uh, we've mentioned that, but an awful lot of, you know, sort of up there gear. And I kind of want to give you my honest take on what I see as the benefits of, well, of high-end or hi-fi as opposed to sort of more consumer-based hi-fi. But the best analogy I can give comparing, say, hi-fi and standard, com you know, everyday sort of earbuds and so on is Imagine that your favorite piece of music is your favorite journey in a car. Now that journey doesn't change regardless of the car that you're driving in. You're still seeing the same things. You're still pretty much experiencing everything as you would regardless of the journey, regardless of the car rather that you're in. The journey is still the same. However, when you're in a better car, a sports car or a luxury car, there are elements to your journey that you wouldn't necessarily have experienced were you in a normal bog standard car. By that I mean when you're in a really good car, a really good sports car, you get a feel for the road. There are elements in the road that you begin to feel and understand and enjoy that you wouldn't necessarily have were you in a, a just a normal old car. And the journey is the same, but there are elements within that journey that you may have not noticed or have been brought out to you that make that journey much more exciting. So much so that if you were in a car, a normal car, the journey would be uh, sort of, yeah, I enjoyed that. It was great, I remember it, move on. But if you're in a sports car or a really good car and you're driving along a very familiar road on a journey, you want to do it again. You want to, you want to experience that again to try and think, you know, try and see if there's more things that you've missed or, you know, the whole sort of experience in terms of what it gives you in terms of excitement and the feel and so on. So that to me is the difference between normal, bog standard, everyday, hi-fi audio experience for the masses and then sort of hi-fi is to me, it's, it's like driving along a familiar, familiar road, listening to the same song that I've heard a million times, but hearing it differently because the, the equipment is bringing out something new that I may have not experienced or adding new life to it or bringing a clarity to it that I hadn't experienced before. That to me is the key difference in hi-fi. 
is it worth the expense? Now, I get, I get this because there's a whole, there's a whole element to sort of hi-fi that once you get down that route, everything just costs an absolute fortune. And sometimes you do sort of pinch yourself and going, oh, come on, you know, this is a joke. You're charging two, three hundred pounds for, a, you know, whatever it is they're charging for that elsewhere would be an awful lot cheaper. But anyway, the point that I'm making is that once you start to reach beyond that, there's a real diminishing return on your investment. Um, my brother spends an absolute fortune on hi-fi. Absolute fortune. You know, he has spent twelve, fifteen thousand dollars on DAX from Cord, and they're amazing things. And even he has admitted that the there is a real diminishing return between having, say, spent a few thousand to having spent fifteen thousand the return you get for your investment is so small that you're trying to sort of squeeze so much out of it and then it gets to a point of whether you're just simply justifying it because of the expense and i see this a lot i've seen this a lot in in reviews um for gear there's people that will review something and because they've spent uh, an awful lot of money, say, on a camera. I've got a, a Blackmagic 6K Pro, which we're filming on now, and I saw a lot of reviews of people that have bought red cameras, which are crazy expensive, amazing cameras, but the differences between the two for most people are relatively small, yet the Blackmagic cameras are an awful lot cheaper. And you see these reviews of people saying, yeah, but it's, you know, the black magic camera isn't as good because of, uh, I've just spent 20 grand on a red camera. You know, they don't say that, but you see that's what's going in there. So there's this whole justification that goes on in your head that because you've spent that much money, you kind of have to justify it to yourself through either, you know, reviews as I've seen on YouTube with cameras as an example, but also when you're listening to music and you're just trying to justify that extra expense to, to, to make yourself feel better because you spent a bloody fortune on hi-fi. So it's important to understand that, you know, it, it is horses for courses with all these things, with all TVs, cameras, phones, hi-fi, cars. It's, you know, it is personal choice. But for me, based on my experience, th th that hi-fi is worth it if, if, I don't think you can ever justify the expense so much, more a case of live with the expense of it and understand that reach, I think the important thing is to reach a certain level within the hi-fi that you're building and be happy with that. The thing I've noticed with my brother is he's constantly changing gear, constantly selling on eBay, constantly trying to get that sort of pinnacle. And I think it's important just to reach a certain level, be very happy with it, and then be done. Because this stuff, the majority of it, lasts a lifetime. The good stuff will last you 20, 30 years. Easy. If it's well made, it's of a good brand, and uh, yeah. It's just they, they're built like tanks. What are your thoughts? I'm interested in what you think with Hi-Fi. Do you think it's just a load of old tosh? Do you think it's just a waste of money? Have you gone down that road? Have you gone down the crazy route? Um, let me know. I'm always keen on what people think. So let me know in the comments below. Uh, tell me what gear you got. Tell me, you know. Let's, let's geek out, let's nerd out on some gear. Ah, yeah, give me a thumbs up if it pleases you, or a thumbs down for the same reason. And uh, I will see you next time. Don't forget to click the bell because that helps awfully. And of course, you know, subscribe and all that lot. And I'll see you next time.